Thank you, Greg and Mike, Brittany, for the, the invitation. This is my great pleasure to be here to talk about CDT. And CDT is this design technique that we built and we are using at Zupi, a Brazilian tech company, to build software, to build real world software. And today my goal here is to convince you that CDG could be an interesting approach to you for your next product. So uh, let's just get started with these, uh, these figures here, which are a lot of code, but they all come from the same class. Actually, the class from this Spring framework. If you are a Java developer, chances are that you have used Spring in the past. So if this kind of thing, this kind of big class happens in Spring, a well, very, very well known and popular product, chances are that it may also happen on our own products and our own projects. And this figure here raised many questions. How can we refactor? Where are the points that we should refactor? How should we start refactoring? How to spot the bug? Where is the bug? How many bugs? And how can we test this code to make sure that there is a bug? And all these questions can be summarized in this simple question here. So how to reason about this code? How, how to understand this code? So the idea of CDG is to provide a way to improve uh, how developers understand and reason about code. Uh, last year, I guess, Kent Beck, who is a well-known practitioner, wrote this tweet that I would like to just read very briefly for you. The goal of software design is to create chunks or slices that fit into the human mind. So going back to the last slide, can we fit that one single class on our mind? I bet we can do. Software keeps growing, but the human mind maxes out. So we have to keep chunking and slicing differently. So if you happen to have to leave this talk early, this is the message that I'd like to, to show to you. The goal of software is to keep chunking and slicing differently. CDD is actually another approach, our simple approach for chunking and slicing. This is the goal of CDD. And how does this happen with CDD? CDD has two goals. The first one is to reduce the developer's cognitive load. So going back to our first example, how can we really understand that code? How, how much effort should we place to understand that one single class? Maybe some good effort. And how does CDG try to reduce this cognitive load? It does so by posing a limit on the number of items that developers could use in a single class or a single file. So essentially, you can use whatever technique or approach that you, you want, you find funny to use, you like to use. But you should do that with a limit. And CDG brings this idea of limit from this theory, from this psych psychological theory, which is the magical number seven theory. It's a well-known and well-accepted theory from the psychological domain. And very briefly, this theory says that we as human beings are only able to process like seven plus or minus two, minus two units of information in our short term memory. If we, receive, if we receive more information at the same time, chances are that we lose our ability to process that information. So this graph here pretty much shows what, what goes on when we receive more information. If you are processing just one, two, or three informations at the same moment, we can handle a very good understanding about what is going on. But when we receive four, five, six, seven units of information at the same time, we drastically reduce our ability to process that information. That happens when we are trying to give a talk and my kid is calling me, my phone is beeping, the, the, the car is honking on the street and so on. And I eventually lose my ability to understand what I, what I was doing. So CDD has this idea of limit. We should place a limit on the items in the source code that developers could use. 
And if a given class or a given file is over that limit, it's time to refactor. So CD has two main benefits here. It sheds some light on the complexity, the source code, and it gives to the developer a tool that is useful to decide when to refactor. When do you refactor? With 3D, you refactor when you are over the limit. So here in the right, I just have here an example of a single class that uses CDD by using this ICP annotation. So every time that uh, I'm using this class here that suppose increase the complexity that the teams believes that could increase the complexity, we should add this annotation here, ICP, ICP, ICP. At this moment, we should do that manually and the team is, is in charge of summing all these annotations here to make sure that the code is over or not the limit. So this is the idea of CDT, basically this. You should go to your team, talk to the team about, hey, we have a limit expression here. If we use a lot of limit expression, would do this increase the complexity? Oh, if so, we should now tag these limit expressions. We have an if statement here. If we use a lot of if statements, would this increase the complexity? If yes, we should now uh, tag this if statement. If we use certain kind of classes, certain kind of variables from certain kind of objects, would this increase the complexity? If so, we should flag this element. So this is a job CDT. You should flag the elements that increase the complexity. And if it's over the budget or limit budget, you should refactor this. So the last part of this talk, I just would like to show to you um, our experience on using to build Handora. Handora is this training platform that we built at SUPI. And Zoopers go there to learn new technologies, new frameworks, and so and this platform is built using four five service sorry five services and you we have used a cdd to build three of these services here so i have a couple of slides here left and i just would like to show to you this which i believe is the most interesting one so here i have a figure when the red line means the average number size of the classes and the blue line means the number of classes. So through our software evolution, we are increasing the number of classes in the product. It makes sense because software is growing. So we are also growing the number of classes that we have in the product. However, on the other hand, we have this red line here, which says that the number of classes, the size of classes in terms of lines of codes increases in the beginning, but at some time, it does not increase that much. It started to plateau at some moment, at some time. And this, this thing here is what we believe is one of the benefits of CDD. Although we are increasing, almost linearly increasing the number of classes in the product, the size in terms of lines of code are not increasing at the same speed, at the same growth of the number of classes. They are more or less stable. Uh, this is also says that this figure also says that although we do have a, a small number of sizes, we do also have some sizes that are a bit over the limit. So we do have the limit, but we also understood that for some kind of classes, domain classes, we may not have uh, that limit very well done. Um, another figure that I want to like to show to you is about this study, uh, which says that uh, developers should strive to keep their methods under 24 lines of code. And we did a, a, an experiment to make to understand whether this product is under or above this threshold that the paper suggested. And we noticed that 92% of the methods of this product are under this limit. So even though developers were not taught to, hey, 
write small methods because of that paper, they eventually, using CDT, achieved the same goal of having the small methods. When talking to one of the developers, they said that every unit of code is impacted because we know that the limit is and what goes into that limit. So the limit is for the classes and also the methods are impacted. Finally, we also understood that CDT could also impact the side of methods, the testing methods. And in this case, we noticed that uh, on average, that is 80 lines of code per testing method. And Handora has a good coverage. So generally speaking, we also suggest that CDD could also impact the size of the testing methods. Therefore, all, what we learned so far is that CDD seems to help to design small classes. CDD also seems to help design small methods and small testing methods. But as we showed to you, there is some good effort to uh, use CDD because developers have, have to flag the annotation in the source code. We wrote some static analysis tools, but we understood that the, the tools should be, should be very well integrated with the IDEs, otherwise developers will not use them, the tools. And we also uh, try, we are also trying to motivate other teams to use CDD. And because of time management and time pressure from their agendas, it's not easy to adopt a new design practice. With this, I close my talk and I will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. All right, thank you very much, Gustavo. Um, we do have some questions coming in. And the first one is, can this um, CDD concept be linked to existing easy to compute metrics like cyclomatic complexity? Yeah, uh, it, it could be if you happen to flag the same uh, branches and the things that the cyclomatic metric measure if you happen to flag the same items, it could be a proxy. But as we, as I showed in the example, you can also flag like um, classes that deal with the databases, classes that deal with uh, the user interface. So in that case, um, cyclomatic metric may not help. Okay. And a, a similar question, um, I'll just read this one out. Surely we must have significantly under seven things to think about since we need the remaining short-term memory to actually do the thinking about the problem. So how much, how many things can we have in the code and still have capacity left over to think about what code to write next? Yeah, right. Uh, so uh, what, what, what happens in, in the teams is that the team should decide what part of the code they should measure, they should flag, right? So if the team decide that only these small classes here and these other cyclomatic kind of cyclomatic, cyclomatic measures should be flagged, so the team just go for it. So CDD is mostly about what the teams believe would be important to measure. Um, if they believe there are many things to measure, like a list of, a hundred items that will be also hard to understand all the items that should be flagged. But essentially we tell to the teams that they should measure like five to six to seven items. Mm 